Yeah, no, I, I think it is, and I, I think that's uh, that's absolutely correct. Look, Jay Powell is going to say that the market could handle the rate increases, the tightening. What else is he going to say? I'm going to throw the market into recession. So you got to ignore that. But rather than repeating my bearish stance, and I'm as bearish now as I have been, and there's lots of scorn, you know, heaped upon me for for doing that since the beginning of the year, but. I think the best use of my time right now is to uh, is to stage an intervention for all those my bullish friends that feel that they are so addicted to buying the dip to keep looking for stocks that are so cheap when guess what they're going to get a lot cheaper. So just just say you know after me my name is Steve and I'm addicted to buying the market. Look the market's going to go lower. Cash is the best place to be and stop trying to you know to conflate. Today's news, in terms of the consumer so strong, the economy strong, et cetera, with what's going to happen on the long-term view. And the long-term view is that we are going to recession. Even if we don't, that's going to continue to be the narrative of the people that really follow these things rather than those who are perennially bullish and make their living being bullish. So there is no safe place to hide. There is nothing that's cheap enough because you don't know what the earnings are going to be. So sure, you'll get the typical that we've seen every quarter where perhaps we get outperformance, 60 percent, which will be low, of companies will exceed their estimates, but the guidance will be lower and the numbers will keep coming down. So you will have to ask yourself the question, is the market cheap? And I don't believe it is. They will, the market will overshoot in the PE like it has in the past, and as will the Fed. And I think you can take that to the bank. I have not seen so much scorn directed at one individual on the investment committee, uh, more so than I have against <laughs> Steve Weiss, that's for sure, particularly about your stance about cash. But I think it Thank always you, comes Mel. down to, I, I just want to point that out in case people didn't direct any hate, they could feel free to do so right now. Um, but in turn, we keep, we keep on getting back to that, that ultimate question, and I guess that's why I'm talking about information purgatory. We don't know how to value the stocks, and so we're waiting for that guidance. Pete, but I'll pose it to you. Even if we get that guidance, do we, isn't there just a grain of doubt in that guidance? I mean, what did we see from the retailers? What did yeah. we see from Target, for instance? Your Target, Pete, mm -hmm. your CEO, Brian Cornell, yeah. came out with earnings a couple weeks later. Mm -hmm. What happened in terms of inventory markdowns? And then what happened, you know, a few weeks after that in terms of talking about a hot Halloween, everybody's going to go partying, everybody's going back to college, it's going to be hot, mm -hmm. hot, hot. What do we believe here? Well, I think that's why, you know, you've heard me use the word cautious for a while now. And the, the, the one thing, and I, and I understand what Steve's talking about in terms of the bearish view that he's got right now, it makes total sense. We see more and more, you see, in my, matter of fact, in my portfolio, more puts than you've seen in a very long period of time, Mel. So a lot of that is just trying to position either as a hedge, but actually trying to be even a little bit more aggressive by having some of those puts because I do think, like Steve's talking about, that we do have some downside potential that, that could be there. If that's the case, I want to have some puts so I can profit from that. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I've been buying puts all around the world, as a matter of fact, because they're not just you know, the, in the spiders or something like that or in the queues. I'm looking over whether or not you want to look at the UK itself, you want to look at Germany, you want to look at a lot of different places. I want to have that protection in place or at least something, not just protection, but maybe I can make a little bit of money on that put position as I'm looking to the downside because I do think that there's a lot of different shock waves that could go through things and it could cause the markets to go down. Now, you brought up Target, which was a great example. They miscalculated big time in Target. Brian Cornell fessed up. They said exactly that. They bought the wrong types of things. They weren't able to sell them. And they were essentially going to just cut those out, Mel, and get rid of them as, as much as and as fast as they can. So the second half of the year, the, the, they can have a little bit better shot at getting some of those numbers. So I think that they're going to be true to their word. We know the margins are going to be absolutely awful in this coming quarter. But... They're going to have to be able to, to bite the bullet on that because they think going forward, as long as they've ordered properly, they're going to be in a good position to actually get back to being the target that they were. So there's a lot of different elements going on right now. Volatility is in this kind of an interesting spot, Mel, where it's not quite 30. We keep pushing up on 30, and then we pull right back again. So this somewhere between 25 and 30, call it right now, for the volatility index it's not a no man's land, but it certainly makes it a little bit more difficult to determine exactly how you want to position yourself.